Hi, everyone. <laughs> a little tiny bit early today. So today we're going to start a new craft with me project. And hmm, maybe I'm not live yet. Well, after all that, I was live. <laughs> Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm going to be making a new style of journal cover and a new journal. We were working on the French um, tall, skinny document style journal. And today we're going to move on to a new project. It's still Christmas themed. However, you can make um, whatever I'm making tonight, you can make that into whatever theme you would like. So if I'm using Christmas fabric, you just use whatever fabric went with your theme or whatever style you wanted to make so even though i'm doing christmas now you can tailor it to anything if you're not into christmas you can totally make whatever style you want to make today i'm just going to show you a different way of doing a journal cover and then we're going to assemble the signature and sew it in and start making some pockets hopefully before the end of the night so i'm live every friday at 7 p.m eastern time with a craft with me video and then on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I do a live sale with um, antique and vintage ephemera, uh, journal supplies, all things like that. Hi, Lindy. Hi, Sean. How are you guys? <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Always in there early so that I don't be by myself. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me. So yeah, I was just explaining that we're going to move on to making a new style of journal tonight. And it is one of the 18 that I have to make. And I have several of them in progress. So I'll show you those. And so yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. How are you, Lindy and Sean? I don't know if it's just Lindy. Yes. You try to be early. Well, I appreciate that. So I don't feel by myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's like a little, one of my hairs gets stuck in my eyelashes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how are you, Lindy? Busy week? Thank goodness it's Friday, right? Flip through the old one. I have been working on it. You guys are going to love the flip through. <laughs> I will show it when I'm done. It's getting close. Yeah, the tall French one is getting very near to being complete. And then I'm going to film the flip through. Yeah, I'll go ahead and flip the camera down unless there's anything else I need to talk about. I don't think there really is. But <laughs> anyway, I'll flip the camera down and we'll get started. That way we have the whole time. Not that it's probably going to take us that long, but I guess I could wait a few minutes. It's only three minutes, right? <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I've tried to bring in a whole bunch of Christmas supplies so that I have some more fun things to work with. You know, the last one was really like elegant and French themed and we used antique documents and things like that. This one is very much a 1950s or um, not as elegant. It's, it's more like Tim Holtz style, which is easier for me because he does make so much ephemera and little bits and pieces and papers and everything. So that that style for me, working off of like a, a more modern 1950s is kind of modern compared to Victorian stuff that I normally do. That style is a lot easier for me. It typically goes faster. I can find a lot more things to put in the journal. I also have a new scrapbook line, um, a new scrapbook paper line that I purchased. And I know it's scrapbook paper, but it fits the style of journals that I'm making. So I wanted to show you guys that. there It is a current one for this year. So hopefully there are still some pieces out there if anyone wants to take a look at those. Yeah, so I think these ones will be easier because we can use scrapbook paper. We can use modern new lease and things like that without making it feel out of the time period. Awesome. 
So how was your week? My week was kind of hectic and busy, but hi, Sean. Thanks for joining us. So yeah, my week was kind of hectic and busy, but I'm glad it's the weekend or almost the weekend. We have the Pinners Conference in Scottsdale this weekend. So I'm going to be going to that with my daughter. The Pinners Conference, if you're not familiar with it, is a massive craft event. It's not just paper crafting or beads or anything like that. It's pretty much has something for everyone. There's things from um, knitting and crocheting and all kinds of needle arts. There's painting and home decor. Like you can make the etched cutting boards or the um, burned in design cutting boards. I forget what that's called right now. But yeah, there there's like you can etch glass vases, you can do floral arrangements, you can do cake decorating, you can make terrariums, like it's all kinds of stuff. And so my daughter likes to go and do the make and takes. And so that's what we're going to go do tomorrow. Super excited about it. It's going to be a very, very long day, though. <laughs> it's a huge, I don't know how big it is, but it's a huge event, like a huge arena where they're holding it. So it should be a lot of walking. I do grunge, yes, rarely, but I do. I like grunge, but only for certain styles and things. I can do like a grungy French industrial journal. I can do a manly grunge. I don't really do steampunk. It's just not my style. Hi, Donna. Not really my style. I mean, I don't mind it and I could do it, but for me, I guess I just am not into it enough to feel like what I make is truly like inspired, <laughs> you know, like I can, I can do it. I can put pieces together, but that one style, the steampunk style for me is just really kind of like, I don't want to say unenjoyable, but it's just something where I'm basically putting pieces together and I don't feel like I'm creative enough in that style to go and make something without like a kid or something like that. Yeah. I like grunge, but it's not my number one, <laughs> so I don't do a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people like grungy things. I, I appreciate them and how cool they are with all their stains and their marks and everything like that. I like it. It's just not typically where I gravitate towards when I make my journals. Mine are much more lacy. What kind of style, what, what is your favorite style? So if, if anyone could type in, that would be great. If you're busy doing something, you just have me on in the background, totally understand. But let me know what your favorite style is. Either, it doesn't even have to be something that you made. Tell me what your favorite style is of, you know, journals or, or art or anything like that, really. You could tell me. Hi, Judy. Like if you make journals, what's your favorite style? What do you gravitate towards? If you do some type of other crafting, what do you gravitate towards? Shabby for Lindy. Okay, I understand. I love shabby too. I don't get too crazy with the pink and the shabby. Mine is kind of um, more neutral, but <laughs> Sean likes the grunge. Yep. I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. So it's interesting. We all have a style, right? And even if when you first start out, you don't know what your style is. If you make enough projects, eventually you just kind of start gravitating, or at least that's the way it was for me. You just kind of start gravitating towards a particular type. And it's not like you reproduce the same thing over and over again. Every project is different. But I just find myself gravitating down a certain road. And for me, it is extremely vintage, antique, more Victorian than not, but also I can do, you know, Tim Holtzy kind of things, but it's just vintage. That's my style. Pink, green, and white. Yep. The lovely sage green and pink and white cream. I love all of those things. I love the soft blue that goes with shabby. I love all of those things. Raggedy Ann and Andy grunge. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, for me, grunge is just, I like it, but it has to be a specific theme for me. Like if I'm doing grunge, then it has to be the theme of grunge or it has to be something else that ties in with grunge. I can't just do like a French grunge, just like super, super grunge. I just, I don't know. I can't just do it like that. I can do French industrial grunge, but <laughs> I can't do anything else. 
journal, yeah. But not overly lacy, right? You have to walk that line where it's too frilly. And I like some, I mean, that's great. I like some that are too frilly, but for my normal style, it's right in the middle. Some lace, but not too frilly. I like the shabby chic a lot. And those ladies who totally deck out all of that stuff with all the ribbons and bows and lace and all of those girly things, I love it and it's great. And I'll do it, but it's just not where I gra gravitate towards. 50 style journals. Yeah, that's awesome. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I was looking at your questions, but didn't say hello. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll go ahead and get started. For those of you that weren't here, we're doing a new journal today. We're starting a new journal, new project. It's one of the 18 that I'm doing. I don't know if I said 16 or 18. I'm honestly 18 is a lot and I'm losing my head, but it is 18. And I, it's one of those that we're working on. And I have several in progress that I'll show you. It's a more like last time we did super French, super antique, super lacy, whatever old stuff. Now we're doing more of a Tim Holtz kind of middle of the road, 1950s style journal. I'll flip the camera down and we'll get started. Thanks for joining me though. Let's get into it so that we can use all of our time. Let me get this sitting fixed. There we go. Okie dokie. Let me show you where I've started and then we will kind of go along with work in progress. So I'm going to show you how I made these covers in hopes that maybe you guys want to make some. These are my covers. It's a forest green and they're backed. This is actually glue. It got super messy. I will cover that with the pocket. There's this one. There's this one. And there's this one. So how these are constructed are all of the corners are wrapped around and they're sewn. And so it's super easy to make these and these can be made into any size. If you use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, you can literally make this, I mean, any size that you wanna make it. These ones here are made to eight and a half by 11 size. That is the size of the cardstock that I grabbed accidentally, actually. It was supposed to be a 9 by 12 piece of cardstock. Anyway, so these are going to be slightly smaller journals. It's not going to matter in the end. All we're going to do to modify that is trim down some pages, but I've already got them half started, so that's what we're going <laughs> with. And so I'll show you how I started this. It's super, super easy. Why I like this style of cover is, A, you can have fabric on both sides. You can even add padding to the fabric on the front cover if you desire. I usually put a piece of felt in if I want a little bit of padding. Otherwise, it's, let me show you, it's super slender and it's finished all the way around. So there's not going to be like fraying and whatever. If you want that, you can leave them fray and leave them unfinished. But I just like that super nice finished look and the super... I mean, it's straight, right? It's not bumpy. You can write all over inside of this journal without having bumps and lumps. So basically, you cover two pieces of cardstock with fabric, put them together and sew around them. It's not very, not very difficult, but when you're doing 18 journals at once, you need some pretty quick covers. So that's why we're doing this style for these people. Um, I'm just going to whiz through, whiz through and show you, sorry about that, whiz through and show you how I did them quick. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. So here is my fabric for this one. I've just snipped and tore two pieces of fabric. This one is actually like a really pretty green. I don't know. It's showing up so olive, but it is really pretty and then buffalo plaid and then you need two pieces of cardstock any two pieces of cardstock i don't know why i have 18 in here but anyway <laughs> but you just need two and so then i used fabri you can use whatever glue works best for you but 
you tear your fabric or cut your fabric, or it can be like an old quilt top. It can be whatever you want to put on the front of it. Okay. It could be old sheets. It could be a slow stitch piece that you made. It could be anything really, but to get that nice structure, the nice structure of a cover, right? Cause you want something for your cover that's pretty thick and, and durable, right? Like this is relatively thin actually, but you want something sturdy, right? You don't want something super floppy unless you want a floppy cover for a journal. So that's why we're putting cardstock in between them. This cardstock is from Hobby Lobby. It's just craft cardstock. I like to use either ugly cardstock that I'm not going to use for anything else as long as it's not going to show through. Or you can just use, you know, something neutral colored if you're worried about it sh showing through. In this instance, I just happen to have that. So one thing to remember is if you have like patterned fabric and it is directional, you need to pay attention to that when you're making the cover. So this one isn't really directional, right? Like it could go either way. I mean, doesn't really matter. I didn't iron it. You don't really need to. You can pretty much get out all of your wrinkles. These should be pretty quick and then we'll move on to actually making one. So how I did this is I cut my fabric to a 10 by 13 ish piece, right? Because we're going to wrap it so it doesn't have to be an exact. You just want to make sure that you have overhang on all four sides of your cardstock so that you can cover it completely and wrap all your corners. So typically for a 10 by 13 piece of fabric, I'm using a nine by 12 piece of cardstock. However, I accidentally grabbed the wrong ones and I don't know where the nine by 12 is. So we're just going to keep using the same size. That way all of my journals that I'm making are the same size. So basically you lay your cardstock on it now I'm going to sew around this like I sewed around all those other covers. So I want to keep my glue away from the edge so that I can run my sewing machine easily around it without having to like worry about damaging my sewing machine, etc. So I just run a bead of glue. My glue is getting all gloopy for some reason. Run a bead of glue around it. I mean, oops, it got a little low there. You're going to cover the whole entire thing with glue. It doesn't have to be smoothed out unless you want to smooth it out. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. You're just tacking down the fabric at this point, especially on this side. Position your cardstock in the center or thereabouts. Smooth that out a little bit. And then you want to wrap it, okay? So for wrapping it, you need to snip your corners. I mean, you don't have to, but it makes a much nicer, makes a much nicer, um, tighter corner. There's all different ways of snipping them. Basically, you just want to kind of snip in from both angles to allow you to fold that corner in. Some people snip it kind of straight. Some people kind of snip it at an angle. It doesn't really matter as long as you're able to fold in that corner. And you don't want to snip the corner off because you want the corner of the cardstock to be covered. I know most of you already know how to probably do this, but there are some people that watch my videos and they've never made a journal before. So we're kind of starting at the very beginning. Again, you're going to just put it around the edge, not all the way to the cardstock because I want to sew around it. So leave it a little bit. You know, obviously your fabric needs to be in the glue, but leave it as far over as you can so that you don't have to sew into it. I don't know how your sewing machine is about sewing into Fabri-Tac, but mine is not loving it. And so at this point, we don't put it in the middle of this one. We are just going to fold in our corners and you want to feel and make sure that you're getting it in there and tack that down with the glue. You don't have to be super precise about these. Basically, it's just folding it up and getting it out of your way at this point. You are going to stick a whole nother fabric covered cardstock piece on top. So it's not going to matter really too much. Then just fold it up as neatly as you can. And I like to try to pull it when I fold it so that I don't have any wrinkles. And then fold this one up.
So you could do this any style you wanted. If you were doing like a grungy journal, I'm sure you could rust up some fabric and that would look awesome. And then just be mindful of your corners as you go. You could use some super ratty tatty fabric. And then we're going to put book corners on these as well. So any type of corner gap that you may get, I mean, there's not really much of any, but anything that you would get, we're going to put a book corner on. And then if you feel like your corners need a little dab of extra glue, go ahead and do that. And then I'm just kind of pushing it up with my fingers and rolling it up. Okay. And that's that. And that's what it looks like on the front. So we've just covered a piece of cardstock with fabric. It doesn't have any wrinkles in it, so we're all good. If it had a wrinkle, you would want to adjust that because you don't want to leave a wrinkle in it. Then for this one, it's just buffalo plaid. It's not directional. So we're just going to do it again. Same thing all over again. And then snip. Theoretically, you would have snipped first, but I got ahead of myself. Softly quiet tonight. Everybody getting ready for the holidays? Who has a Christmas tree up so far? More than that, who is already finished with their shopping? Because I don't like to leave it to the last minute. Now, because this is a plaid, I am trying to keep this somewhat straight so that my plaid lines aren't all zigzaggy on the other side. Very quiet out there tonight. So I'm just pulling it up and pushing it into the glue. And I'm going to try to straighten out my plaid just a tiny little bit. It's really a check, not a plaid, but you understand what I'm saying. And then I'm just tucking in that corner and folding. So yeah, I like to get my Christmas shopping done early. I don't like to wait till the last minute. I do like to shop a little bit on Black Friday, but I don't like to wait to the last minute to get it all done. It doesn't, it's, it takes away from enjoying the holidays when you have to stress about it, right? Okay, so we're good there. Now we have two pieces that looks like that. Now we have two pieces that are covered. Now, this one is just a little bit off for the plaid, so I am going to readjust it. There we go. Okay, we have two pieces that are covered. Now we're going to glue them together. Super quick, super easy. Fussy cutting again, Stephanie? That's awesome. <laughs> Too busy to type. Judy bought a tiny live tree at Costco. Aw, well, at least you have a tree. I like those tiny trees from Costco. So now I'm going to glue them together, and I'm going to put a pretty good-sized dot in the corner, but not where I'm going to sew. And then I'm just going to put a very big, heavy line of glue, like I'm just dripping it all the way around. Again, not where I'm going to sew. And then in the middle. And yeah, you probably don't need to use that much glue, but I did. <laughs> and then I'm just cleaning off the tip of my glue here. None of this glue will show through to the other side, so we're all good. Okay. And neither of my patterns are directional, so I don't need to match up anything. I'm good. You just visually match it up, push it down, and then take your fingers and smooth where you know you put that big bead of glue.
Okay, so there's your cover, right? It's all lined up, nothing's overhanging, we're all good there. And then I would give this a little bit of time to set up and then I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna run a zigzag with black thread all the way around it. Nothing fancy, it's just a super quick, easy cover. Then, like I said, we're going to put metal Tim Holtz book corners on the corners of it, even though they're really, I mean, they're wrapped pretty well. So, yeah, once you sew, it all gets tight together like that. So basically, I have this exact one done because he's one of the ones I have to do. So after you sew, like you're not really going to super be able to see the difference, but after you sew, yeah. It's just sewn around. Anyway, so let's move on to actually making the signature of the journal. We need to decide which cover we're going to use for these pages. And I wanna put this one somewhere to dry so I don't bump it and get it a mess. Not that you really could at this point, but. An antique feather tree. I used to have tons of those. <laughs> Donna, you're speaking my language when you talk about feather trees. I love feather trees. Yeah, we used to have a five foot antique one with all antique ornaments and I loved it. I mean, we had a regular tree too, because obviously the kids didn't want a feather tree, but yeah. A mobile home. Yeah, so you need something smaller. Yes. Right, not much time for decorating. I know, it's really getting hard, isn't it? Okay, so basically these are our fronts and then I'm gonna do these for insides. And I need to decide between these two, this is red, not orange. I don't know why it always, like I didn't know if I held it up closer, if I shielded it from the light, like it always shows up orange, but it's red. So I don't know how to fix that, but it's traditional poinsettia <laughs> color. So let me show you the kit that there's two of them that I'm working with. And then I want to show you that scrapbook paper that I was talking about. So this is one of the kits. Oh gosh. And I'm going to forget who this is from. This is one of the kits and it's, you know, your super retro, um, like fifties fat Santa. That's what I call him. I call him fat Santa. And I printed, I don't remember who's, um, it might be Vintage Studio 717's um, antique or vintage Christmas paper. I printed that on the back of it. It's just 50s wrapping paper on top of 50s Fat Santa. This is the other page. And again, these are red, not orange. So this is the 50s one. And you've got these cute little angels. Like we used to have little ceramic ones like that. And for the 50s kit, I believe there's only five pages. And these are the five. So I'm going to add a whole bunch more pages both to both of these kits, actually. So we have this one, which is 50s themed. And then I have this one, which is the Tim Holtz kind of vintage style one. And again, I printed some of the 50s paper on the back. I printed some other things on the back red and green. This is um, Artie Mace. I think this is also Artie Mace, but this may be somebody else. I don't remember. So this is the Tim Holtz one that I'm going to do. Retro Santas and these black and white pictures because I want to use some of Tim's black and white pictures. So I was thinking this Tim Holtz one will go in one of those covers. And then I have these other covers right here that I'm thinking of the 50s style in. We can do the 50s with the Cardinal. And it's a hunter green. I don't know why it's showing up near black to you, but I promise it is a hunter green. And then we also have this one that we could do with the 50s, which is the one I'm leaning towards for it. It's a red with little green Christmas trees and a plaid. So that's what I'm thinking for those. 
I think we're going to work on this one together. I mean, maybe if we had time, we could do both of them. I also printed these, and I believe these are Artie Mays. They're ephemera pieces. I liked that it had some more sepia or black and white tone things. So yeah, I want to use these. I printed these literally just minutes before <laughs> I came in here. But yeah, having the rain that you missed all summer long, yeah. Hi, Jay, welcome. Y'all are having a conversation. It took you a few minutes tonight, but you're getting there, <laughs> getting to be talkative. We haven't had rain in more than two months here. So anyway, voting on covers, one or the other. Weigh in, do you want Holly or do you want poinsettia? Holly? or poinsettia i'm thinking maybe poinsettia for that let me show you the scrap of paper that i got so this is the line of scrap of paper it's simple stories and it's dear santa and it is also very much like the 50s i'll show it to you in case you're looking for something it's very much sorry about the crinkle the 50s fat santa but it's also kind of modern at the same time right it's vintage but it's modern so it's vintage but it has like you know we wish you a merry christmas in the background it's more i don't know a modern vintage take you know a modern take on vintage so like this is a little um, eggnog milk cap it has lots of black in it which i like i mean usually i don't do black at christmas all these labels so i'm thinking this one will also go into one of these covers this looks like a tim holtz piece but so simple stories dear santa is what it's called hi lucy What paper am I printing on, Donna? It is, mm, it's the matte photo paper from Amazon. It is not the Epson one. It's just a different, a different brand, but it's double-sided printing. This one I love because of all the cutout tags and I have a bunch of these so that I can cut these out and these journal cards because I can use these all the time for every Christmas journal. And don't you guys love this one? It's so cool. And then this one. And this one. Let me go see if I can find the package of the paper. So these ones I didn't print, obviously, because they were scrap of paper. But the kit that I printed and showed you is printed on paper from Amazon. And I tried the Epson, but the Epson does not have, or at least I didn't find on Amazon, a double side. I'm not going to put that back in there. It's just going to be way too noisy. So anyway, that's one of the kits. And I think maybe we would put that in this one because of the black, right? Like, if you look at these colors, I think we'll put this in this one. It's also more modern with that buffalo. So that's what I was thinking for that. And then let me grab that paper for you. It's just right here in the hallway. So I brought you two. These are the two that I like the best. And these ones are for the Epson EcoTank printer that I got at Costco. This one is cardstock. It is the matte photo paper, but it is a heavier weight and it is basically a light cardstock, perfect for printing all your tags and things like that on. And this one on Amazon for the 40 to 50 sheets 
is like six bucks. It's super good. This one, Koala brand, this is better than the Epson matte photo paper and it's double sided. And this is 32 pounds. I think it's perfect. It's not too heavy. It's kind of a light 32 pounds in my opinion. And it prints beautifully on both sides, which I love. Um, this one I think is like 12 bucks or something, but you're getting 110 sheets. So those are the two papers that I use. And this one is printed on the Koala. And if you notice, like, I know it looks orange to you, but this is the only way I can get red from the Epson Eco Tank is to print it on matte photo paper. If I don't use matte photo paper, I get burgundy. I cannot get red no matter what I do. So I don't know if it's just that printer. It kind of seems like it because I can run it through my laser and it prints just fine. So as far as my review on the printer from Costco, yeah, I'm about 50-50. I'm not sure if I want to return it and try a more expensive one because this is the printer is the Epson EcoTank 3850 from Costco. They do have a 2850, which is cheaper. The 3850 is like 389 or something. And honestly, I don't like to have to use specialty paper all the time. I would rather just use regular paper if it would print red because I have a very nice quality, you know, 28 pound paper but it won't print red on it unless it's the matte photo paper. So I don't know if I'm going to return this printer or not, but so far I've had it for like, I don't know, 20 days. It might just end up staying here. <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of the, the printer situation. The laser printer works really great. I love the laser printer. It was much more expensive and it does a better job printing and it prints colors much more accurately, but it will not print borderless. So if I want borderless, it has to go to the eco tank at the current time till I get something else. Anyway, <laughs> the HP Tango. I don't know what the Tango is, but I'll look into it. Yeah, the Koala paper. I was for sure thinking the Epson would be better, especially because I have an Epson printer, but it's not. It's very, very similar, but Epson paper wasn't double-sided, what I found. Hi, Lucy. You snuck in there. Anyway, so this is the kit. Now, because the kit is literally the same size as the cover, I am going to have to cut it down. So no big deal. You cut a little off the sides, all sides, and we're good to go. This is already double-sided printed, so honestly, I'm just going to trim it. My new Tim Holtz trimmer came, so that's kind of happy. I wish that I would have remembered to bring a bone folder in here so that it would help me fold this, especially because I really could have used a score, score line, but we're just going to do it. I mean, the fold isn't going to have to be perfect anyway. I mean, it needs to be straight but it doesn't have to be perfectly flattened because we're going to have a signature in here and it's not really going to be a perfectly flat crease anyway. It kind of rounds out after you get a signature in there. So there's a little chunk of glue right there, right where I'm trying to fold it. So anyway, that's going to be our journal. We're going to sew into the signature, the signature into the center. I'm probably going to put pockets in. If I really thought about it, I might have put pockets on before I sewed them, but I wasn't sure if I wanted fabric pockets or if I was doing pockets or whatever. So I just left them that way. But if you are going to put fabric pockets in or lace pockets, it is probably better to do it when you're sewing it so that your fabric pockets can get sewn in as well to be sturdy. But yeah, so that's what we have. I just need to decide which way I like the poinsettias going. And I think I like them this way better. Not, I mean, it's not really directional, but it's <laughs> just the way it appears in my eyes, right? So that's what we're going to do for a cover. Eventually, he will come down here in the center. He needs a good press, but whatever. We'll put a signature in there and he'll be fine. Um, for these, I don't think there's anything that's going to matter that I trim it down. So... We're just going to trim it. And I haven't even tried the trim, the Tim Holtz trimmer yet. So let's try that. Also, I forgot in the beginning, I wanted to tell you guys. So I got this packet of goodies in the mail the other day. Oh my gosh. So beautiful, right? 
These are all Sheila trims. Sheila from Boho Daydreams. These are all her trims. And she sent this to me. She's so lovely. Look at these fancy trims. They're all beautiful colors. And she has them. She has any color that you guys could ever imagine. She has them. So yeah, she sent me this big fat packet. I mean, it's massive. Fat packet of trims. Boho Sari trims. They're lovely. Look at all the different colors there are. And so blingy. So these will be used in an upcoming project. I have a plan for all of these light blue ones. Yep. They're going to go with those light blue French invoices that I printed and showed you guys the other day. So there's green. Yeah, there's just all the different colors. This is more of a pastel pack, but she has every single color. Like if you guys wanted Christmas fancy trims, she's got them. And you can look her up. She's on YouTube or you can send her an email or whatever. But yes, awesome pack of trims. It is from Sheila. Yep. It might not be heavy duty enough for the amount of printing that you do. Yeah, I do a lot of printing, which is why I was trying to do the eco tank too. But honestly, at this point, whatever works is whatever works. I don't really care about the ink. I just need colors to be accurate. So we'll see. For right now, it's stay, it, it's been here. It's almost a month. So, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Lindy. Yep, that was from Sheila. Okay, this is the Tim Holtz trimmer. I have it backwards. Sorry about the noise. I just got it the other day. I needed a new one because my old one was super, super, super old. And obviously, you don't want all of these in here whenever you're going to use it. So just push from the backside and pop it out, which I'm attempting to do, but it's too far away for me to get any leverage on it. Yeah. Well, there's that one out. This guy doesn't want to come. So it comes with a scoring, a scoring. The, the light gray one is for scoring paper. And this one is for cutting. It's just an extra blade. I don't know where I'm going to put these, but I don't need them. I just need a cutting one right now. So then the cutting blade is here and it slides. But I guess the whole thing is you don't have to flip this up and down. So we'll see how it goes. Hi, Carol. Doing well. How are you? All right. So let's trim it down. Basically, this right now is an eight and a half by 11, and I need to get it to seven and a half by nine and a half. So, is that right? Yes. Nine and a half. Does that sound right? Yes. No. <laughs> Yes, nine and a half. So I need to trim off. We're going to start with hmm, getting used to the measurements is kind of strange. Okay. Yeah, getting used to the measurements is super strange. Okay, well, I guess that's an inch then. Is that what he's trying to say up here? See these measurements up here? They're slightly different than my other one. They go the other way, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, I'm just going to get it done. I think I'm going to take half an inch off each slide and see where we're at. I'm too, I'm too nervous to do it the other way. So where's half an inch at? I'm like <laughs> trying to figure out the measurement here. Okay, I think this is half an inch. Let's try it. And I'm trying to cut them all at the same time. I don't know how many actually will cut, but we'll see. We'll see. Not all of them, but some of them. So I'm going to pop it back in and trim the other side. And then we'll trim. It all, It got all but two. So we're doing pretty good there. Now I'm going to do half an inch off this side. Yeah, I really should have played with this before I brought it on, huh? I like it though so far it cuts well it's smooth it almost got that one we'll put that over in the other pile okay 
And then I need to take off half an inch on this one. Half an inch there. I know you're not supposed to lift it up, but <laughs> both habits are hard to get rid of, right? Half an inch here. And I'm trying to do double just in case, but it doesn't really look like it needs it. We're going to have some fun strips to work with later. So half an inch is just about right. So we ended up with seven and a half by 10 and the 10 is going to be close. We'll see how it is at the end and see if I need to trim off any more, but that's those ones. Let's trim off these. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> You're not late. You're right on time. Everything's good. I'm just trimming some paper down right now, and I'm trying to find my measurement each time. I'm trying to get used to my new trimmer. I got it from scrapbook.com. I don't know if they still have them, but I know it's nothing exciting. It's just a trimmer, but I really needed one. My other one was like 10 years old, and it's not that it didn't cut, but I didn't like the way that it was had this fold out thing off to the side and you couldn't really see the measurements very well on it. It was like molded plastic measurements, if you know what I mean. Like it's orange and so you see these orange numbers, but they're just molded in. I really like the fact that this is black and white measurements so that I can see it easier. Okay, so half an inch there is fine. Half an inch here. Getting rid of all my little pieces. Yeah, we're going to have to make something with all these little fun strips. Three smallest grandkids for the weekend. Is this your sleepover? For the weekend. Home from uni until the weekend. Busy, busy night. Oh, goodness. Thanks for joining me, Carol. Lots of fun, though. I'm making a journal, and it's going to be this one that we're working on is kind of Tim Holtz-y style. I'm just trimming down the pages because my covers are slightly smaller than my pages. Yeah. So that trimmer seemed to work just fine. This is the cover that I made for the journal, and these are the pages so far. So yeah, now they fit inside of that cover pretty nice. There's some, you know, some concern with as we add pages to a signature, it might pop out. But if it does, I'll trim it. It'll be fine. So there we go. We didn't lose anything super important. The pages super, you know, they look really good. They don't, there's nothing cut in half or anything like that. So we're good there. We do need to fold these and start making our signature. So before I start folding those, that's the that's where we're at with that. Let me get a baby wipe and wipe off this glue so I can put the lid back on it. To pull the sticky out of it. <laughs> okay. And then I did remember to bring in some new glue sticks today, so that was good. We need to pull other pages. It's not Tim Holtz paper. This I believe is Artie Maze. It might be Artie Maze. I think it's Artie Maze. This kit here, I do not remember whose kit this is, but I love this kit. With the vintage pictures. Let me find it for you. I'm just going to pop it on the computer and find it. It's on this computer. It shouldn't be that difficult, right? <laughs> I need to start linking these people, honestly. It's the polite thing to do. So this kit, let me see if these are Artie Mays pages. Okay, so yes, these collage ones are Artie Mays. The ephemera that I showed early on that was printed, those are Artie Mays. And then the kit, the kit, the kit, the kit. 
Whose kid is this? Hmm. Saturday Stamper? No, not Saturday Stamper. Hang on, I'm looking. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> well, darn it. Little Lady Papery. Little Lady Papery is these ones with the pictures. Little Lady Papery. And it's called something, but it doesn't really say in her download. So anyway, that's the kit that I'm using. But I'm not just putting a kit in it. Obviously, I'm putting other papers. So I know right off the bat, I want two coffee dyed sheets of paper in here. We need to count how many pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight double-sided digitals. I'm going to put two coffee dyed papers. That's 10 pages. And then I brought in, where are they? So that's 10 pages. For pages, I brought in some of my coffee dyed pages. I brought in a green and a red, and it is red, it's not orange, and it is hunter green, or it's actually Christmas green, not hunter green, but it's coming out like kind of teal colored. But anyway, they're normal Christmas colors and they go with it. I did reprint some labels so that we could use those to decorate, and some little ephemera pieces, some other things that I was gonna cut out and make, yeah. So I did print some of that. So now we're at 12 pages. I would like to have 15 pages in this journal. So I know we need a music sheet. And for music, I have this little book and he's similar size to the journal. So we're at 12. I'm gonna need some music. So let's pull out some music. Um, I would like to pull this out as a folio so that we can just put it in. I need to find where the folio is though. And it might be stapled, so it might be a futile attempt, but it is stapled. So sad. Um, I don't know if I can get one out or not. Kind of. All right. I don't know that I want Dame Get Up and Bake Your Pies. I don't know that I want that in my Christmas journal. It's a Christmas music book, but I don't know that I want that one. <laughs> Stephanie, it, it's available in my Etsy. However, it's not available today because I've got to get it. I've got to get caught up on orders. It gets so crazy at Christmas time that I have to take it off for a period of time and then put it back on. The Boar's Head Carol? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not liking any of those. Where's like Jingle Bells? I mean, this is like a Christmas carols. Oh, it's from many countries. That's why. All right. Well, we're just going to put one in. And if I don't like whatever this is, we're, <laughs> we're just going to cover that up with something later. But anyway, there's Christmas music. I do like to put Christmas music in Christmas. In Christmas uh, I do like to put music in Christmas journals. Um, then I want to put something that is more like book page or vintage page or something like that. And also where are, where, <laughs> I have way too much stuff out here. That's the problem. Goodness, way too much stuff. So I have Ideals magazines, and since we're doing 1950s, I know there are tons and tons of things we can use in these Ideals magazines. Um, they have lots of images, and the paper is not glossy, so yeah, I like that. I mean, you can pull out a picture of this Christmas tree. It's going to be folded in half and cut down, but whatever. So yeah, we just need to find a page we like, 
And then we'll use this as a page. It's not to say it's not going to be covered with things, but yeah. If there was another Christmas tree, there's lots of vintage things in here. I'm kind of like in this snowy scene, though. Let's do the snowy scene. Yeah, I'm going to put the snowy scene in there. And I'm just going to tear this out. And then obviously we're going to cover up. I need it trimmed down anyway, so I am not concerned about the torn edge at this point. Let's see what's in this one. So like they're very 1950s. If you don't have Ideals magazines, try picking some up. They're super great. They have all kinds of vintage pages in them. Like I'm not going super religious with this one or else I would have used some of those. These tan colored ones are kind of cool. I mean, that would be kind of cool. You could even color that. Let's pull that one. I kind of like the black and white too. I mean, it's not really white, but you get what I mean. I am just going to rip it. I'm trying to break the spine a little bit on it so that I can hopefully get it out better. But yeah. Okay. So we can use one of these, probably not both, but I pulled two anyway. Ideals magazines. I'm going to go with this brown one. I can tell you already. It's just, I like the way, I think that's more Tim Holtzy to me. We'll trim that down. I might use that one, but I'm not sure about it. I need some antique book page. These are the rag paper packs from last uh, sale. I think I'll put one of these in, honestly. Like, it's kind of cool. This is dictionary page. Let me see my cover size. They're kind of cool. Either one of these would be good. Even this little guy would be good and all of these other ones are bigger what about this one can't get it open okay cool there's some super old rag paper book page we'll use this for decorating okay let's start folding and see where we're at I also have all of this extra printed um, kits and things like that if we need some extra stuff to decorate with. It's just all kinds of Christmas stuff that I printed. I need to refresh my brain of what's in here. Yeah, there's a lot. So we should be able to make a lot of ephemera with all that. All righty. Let's start folding some pages. I've missed all the chat. The cover of that music book, yeah. <laughs> Snowy trees. Yep, going with the photos. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yep, 1600s wood, but you know, we'll decorate with it. Okay, let's get these other ones cut down. Those ones are already cut down. I'll just cut these with them because honestly, it's not going to matter. So we will cut these down. It is much easier when you don't have to cut down pages and resize them. Okay, so same thing, half an inch off all the sides. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'm totally fine if something is smaller or shorter. It does not matter to me. And I'm not even going to worry about those papers anymore. I'm just going to let them push out to the other side. What's going on here? Yeah, we're going to have some super fun strips. Okay. Yeah. 
and then half an inch off the other one and I do want something that is smaller so I just don't want to lose a bunch of writing or decorating space at this point but we'll find something smaller to put in a bag an envelope something like that I need this one to be smaller right here okay here we go there we go yes all right so what did we end up with we ended up with the barn and some snow and we ended up with the black and white snowy scene that's kind of black and cream colored and i've got all those fabulous strips to do something with so these are a little bit smaller i went back and cut another half an inch off just to add some variety to the paper and it would be nice if I folded it straight, but yeah. Goodness. It's like I've never folded a piece of paper before. Oh, well. They're fine. So, this one has a picture on both sides of it, so I don't really have to worry about doing anything there. But this one has some text that I would like to cover up. So, something to consider. I've never seen my little copy dyed pages so small before. That's awesome. I've never cut them down, not once. They always go in full. These are regular copy dyed. Cool. Now let's fold up the kit. And we still have these two to deal with. Now I do not like the blue hues in that red barn. I'm going to leave it. Some variety is good, especially because we haven't decorated a family yet. And there's bound to be something that has a blue hue to it. And these ones, I pretty much all fold the same way until as I'm flipping through and I'm like, okay, no, I want that flipped out the other way. We do need to find something for the center. The center fold of the journal. And I really, really like this one, but I also like to decorate in the center. So, goodness. So, they'll be a little grungy, but not too grungy, right, Tim Holtz? So, we have kit pages, we have copy dye pages, and we have two ideals. Well, these are a little taller. Are they too tall? No, they're good. Cool. That worked out great. Now we can stagger all of those. We need to figure out these guys. So if I'm putting him in here, I'm probably going to want to fold him instead of cut, him, cut the rag paper off. But we'll see where that ends up and see what I need to do. This one we're definitely going to have to resize. So he's going to need, he's going to need folded up from the bottom or down from the top. And because I don't like the spores head Carol. <laughs> I'm going to fold it down from the top, and it's going to be a top tuck. Or I could put it in upside down, but I'm going to make it a top tuck. So there's that. And then I'm just going to cut off this white, this white border right here to make it a smaller page. And for that, I'm honestly just going to trim it with scissors. And right where my pocket fold was, we got a little crazy.
There is some blue hue in that Santa paper image that you just folded. Probably. There's always blue in, in something, right? Like every Christmas kit that I've ever seen pretty much has blue in it. Let's assemble this and see where we're at. I think we need a couple more pages, but we'll see. Okay. So how I want to do it is I want to figure out, I've separated out my pages again, right? I've got copy dyed. I've got book pages and music pages, and I've got images. I want to find the first page that I want people to see when they open up the journal. You could see that. You could see this girl. This boy with his sled is pretty cool. This little girl at the toy store, that's probably my favorite. There's this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm going to choose this little girl as my very first page. So I want to start building my signature from there. So inside of this, we've got green. I could either go coffee dye. I could go something more colorful or I could go book page. Okay. I want to alternate the printed pages with the um, coffee dyed pages. So I'm just kind of going back and forth right now doing that. And it's not going to be like a one for one. So like we might put this book page here. We might put that there. And then I might put something that looks nice with green. We'll do that. Then we'll do this other copy dyed. Then I'm going to do this little boy. Then I'm going to do this music. Then I'm going to do, we forgot to do these. So we're okay. I'm going to do this cardinal. If I can get it open. The cardinal is going to go next to this. No. The cardinal is going to go next to this. Then we're going to have this little girl, the little girl. Then I want the red page. Then I'm going to do the blue with the berries. That's not bad. Then I'm going to do this one. And I need one more page in here somewhere because we've got this birdie, right? So I could leave this as my center. That's not bad. Or the red one, or I could flip this around and do it that way, which I think I'm probably going to do. I just want to put something between these two, and I would like a short page here in the center, one or two of those, okay? So that's pretty much our signature. Just got to get it all folded in. That's what we're looking at so far. And that music page and book page are just sticking out just ever so slightly. And we still have plenty of room. We're not too fat. So we can add a little bit more. Not much, but a couple small pages. I have a big box of vintage ephemera that I thought we could dig through. It has some scraps in the top of it. And it has some smaller things. So like this is all good scraps for us to play with later. It has some fabric. It's just a giant box of junk, honestly, but it's all vintagey things. Like whatever this is, we could put one of these in the center. I also forgot Tim Holtz of them or paper, so we could go back and put a piece of Tim Holtz in there somewhere. Here's some vintagey envelopes. Maybe we want to put one of those in. So I like having big boxes of junk to dig through. I think that it's kind of fun to, you know, not really know what you're looking for until you find it. So like these are some vintage onion skin pages. Even one of those could go in there. Looks like some vintage letters. Some kind of forms. Just a big box of junk. There's some more postcardy things. That's kind of cool. Trying to pull out things I think go with Tim Holtz things. 
I don't know. Even one of these envelopes would have been cool in there, but it probably is going to be too big. I don't know. What else do we have? Book page. Book page. Vintage stamps. Bunch of postcards and souvenir stamps. Some pictures. I don't know what else is in here. Oh, it was a top tuck. <laughs> I might have put it in upside down. Now you're going to make me check, but I want it as a top tuck, yes. Okay. There's just a bunch of junk in here. You might be able to do like that as a pocket even. There's some wallpaper bits, some little book page, super old grungy book page. Let me pull one of these out and let me pull one of these out. Are these all single pages? They look like they are. Yes, all single pages. So okay for decorating, but not okay in the signature. Okay, well, that's the big box of junk. It will never go back in the same way as it was. So <laughs> not going to spend an hour fighting with it. More junk. Okay, so we found some cool things to use in there. Let's see where we ended up. I liked this little piece of paper. I don't know what it's for, but let's fold it and see if it cracks. No, it's all right. So we will put him in there. I like this little pocket and it is just about, nope, it's a little bit too big. Maybe we can just put it in as an envelope, as a pocket thing. Let's do that. I was hoping this was gonna fit on one of the pages and it is ever so slightly too big also. That's okay, we don't have to use that. I do like this tiny little page. This will be too big. No, actually this fits. Trying to get it to fold, but because that plastic window is in there, it doesn't really want to. That might be wrap around the page or something. And I like this little card. We're just going to put it in there, or that might be ephemera. And then this little onion skin type page, I think we should just put it in there. I mean, it kind of looks like Tim Holtz stuff, right? So, he's already folded pretty good. I don't know if I can make an onion skin pocket, but I'm going to try. And then we're going to have to cut him down a little bit or fold them up this way first and then fold them up and then fold them in half ah, he doesn't want to fold okay cool so now we have some more things to add in. Let's look and see where we need something. So those two are a little plain. I don't know if I want this like a wrap around the page or if I want this sewn in. I'm thinking we could wrap it around a page for pockets. So it's upside down because I put it there, but it does need to be top. Thanks for checking on that. And then we've got these here. I think we needed something right here in the center to break up these two. 
we did. So now we can do this. He's kind of like a little pocket off to the side there. Yeah. I like that. So we added that and then in the center, I was wondering if we wanted to add this. This little receipt -y thing. Plus I would like something else there. I don't know if we want to add this little book page and that receipt. I kind of like that. And I still didn't find a place for this guy. Hmm, I don't want too much there and that's obviously too much. So I could stagger them. I might stagger them like that and put them in the center. Okay, so now I need to fold everything perfectly into each other and make sure that they're all in and uh, tight and snug. And apparently I need to mute my phone because apparently I forgot. And this is folded this way now. And this goes in here. Because we're going to sew it in as long as I brought the stuff to do that. Not positive that I did, but if I didn't, we'll go in the other room and get it. And everything does not have to be evenly aligned. Like on this one, I like the red poking out the top. So that's fine. And again, I'm going to poke that one out the top. He's still a little too long, so I'm just going to trim him. And now he's not too long anymore. So what's happening out there? Awfully quiet. Awfully quiet. So Stephanie said she was fussy cutting. What are the rest of you guys doing? And this one is also too long still. And I want to keep the center full, so I'm just going to trim off the edge. And I'm good with that. Missy, Misty, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. It's coming along. It's about ready to get sewn in. So I think we have enough pages and it all fits in there perfectly fine. Nothing is overhanging. We're all great. Cool. Where is the book weight? Um, let me check and see and make sure that I have the needle and the other stuff. Well, the book weight didn't hold that down. I was really hoping it would. Okay. Let me see if I have the other things. We'll use some of this for ephemera, this other stuff that I pulled. Let me see if I have the other things to sew this in. Um, do I have string in here somewhere? String, string, string. Sorry, guys. I may have forgotten to bring it in here. Let me see. I brought tons of everything else, though. Okay, here's the string. Unless I want black, but, I mean, you know, that's not terrible. Here's the all. Do I have a needle in here? Hmm. 
It doesn't look like I have a needle. I have tons of everything else, though. Let me run in the other room and grab the needle so that we can sew this in. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I guess I just figured <laughs> that we had it all in here. So I'm going to be right back. It will take me probably less than 90 seconds to go grab a needle. It's a mix of Artie Mays and Little Paper. <laughs> it's Little Lady Papery, I think. Little Lady Papery. I'll be right back with a needle. I'm back. <laughs> Okie dokie. Found a needle. Oh, you're okay. I just want to make sure we give credit, you know. Thank you, though, for helping. Okay. So, this is a very small journal. I'm just going to do three hole. It's pretty simple. It's honestly the easiest. Oh, clips. Darn it. <laughs> well, we're just going to do it without clips because I didn't bring clips in and I'm not going to make you guys wait again. It's a small journal. It should really be fine. This little page in the center is going to give me fits, but whatever. So, because we have staggered pages in the center... I just keep looking at this front and wondering if I want something else before this. But I think in this instance, we're just going to go with it. So, no clips. I always use clips. And normally, I will measure and everything else. But for this one, I'm literally, let me see if you guys can see, eyeballing it. It's fine. It's a small journal, and it's only a three-hole pamphlet stitch. So we're fine. Now, getting your all to go through all those layers of fabric, is a bit tricky. And I'm going to keep them pretty much in the center. There really isn't a reason to go all the way out to the edge. So I'm a good inch and a half into the center there. I wish I could show you guys and I will in just one second. I just don't have clips. So I need to hang on to it. Goodness, that's a little bit difficult. Okay, there we go. That's done. That's going to hold. Nope, it's not going to hold it. <laughs> All right, let's measure this and get this sewn in. One, two, three. I tried the other craft room is right across the hall from this one. So not too terrible. Luckily, I knew where it was. I only have one good one at this point. I mean, it's big. I have lots of small ones, obviously, but I like the big fat one. Okay. So you could sew it in to where your strings at the end are hanging off the back, and you could make them come out the top hole, the center hole, or the bottom hole for charms. I might add charms to this. We'll see how it goes. But for now, my strings are going to come out the center probably at least 70 percent they just come out the center for me i hardly ever put them and all my pages just moved so this is going to be fun so you're going to have to line them all up line them all up get your needle in the center one and then once i get this in we'll be good to go and i don't have glasses on 
So now I've got a feel for it. Definitely use clips. Definitely. Okay, you've got it. So then pull your string all the way through. You're going to keep your tail down here at the bottom. I like to just keep my tail kind of like the length of the book to start. And then trying to hold everything together. We're going to go in this top hole up here. And hopefully that coincides with some paper. If it doesn't, just wait for your paper to line up as you're pushing it in. Uh-oh, we lost our little page. We did. All right. We need, we need some clips. <laughs> I give up. I'm going to get clips. I'll be right back. So sorry about that. I really didn't want to have to have you guys wait again, but the little page is falling out and everything else is going haywire. So we need to clip it. <laughs> Obviously, it's much better to clip it before you poke your holes because even now it's going to be difficult lining it up. But we're going to do our best and it will be fine. There's always a fix for everything, right? So we need to clip it. Hopefully you're not seeing the top of my head there. We've got one in. Now we're going to clip this one. And this will help hold that little page too. Normally I like to clip them opposite of each other, but it's okay. All right, this is where we should have started. Not a problem. Can still do it just fine. I just want to go through the same hole. Eh. There we go. It starts to go and then it stops to go. <laughs> okay, hang on. Yep, we're still there. I didn't poke a new one. We're good. There we go. Goodness, such a small journal giving me trouble. Okay, so like I said, just hold your tail. Hold your tail down here with your finger. Flip your journal over, go through that top hole. I'm trying to find it. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but the top hole is right here and I'm just trying to find it with the needle tip and then popping it through the pages. And because we wiggled everything around, you gotta kind of wiggle your needle to get it back through there. Eventually it will find the hole that you've poked. Okay, so there's that one. And now we're going to go all the way down and go in this last one, which is right at the bottom of this page. Is it? Yes. Needs all again. I got to find it. Yep, right there. There we go. Okay, so we're all good there. We're all good here. We're going to go back through this center, but I want to hang on to this, the thread so that I'm not splitting it. Okay. So we want to even these out so that we have a nice long tail. And I want to hang on to this one and pull it over to the side 
so that when I pop my needle back through this hole, I'm not splitting my wax linen thread. Oh, well, I split the page. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> oh, gosh. I've never had one go so wrong before. Well, of course, it's going wrong right on camera. That's awesome. Love that. There we go. We found it. <laughs> oh, this will definitely go in my blooper reel. Okay, so we want one string on each side, the tail and the needle string on each side of our signature string here so that we can tie a knot. There we go. There's those. Let me pop these in a bend so that I don't lose my needle. Goodness. So we're all straight. We're not crooked there. We don't have any extra slack in them. And then we just tie them. I like to triple tie mine or triple knot mine. Double is probably fine, but I'm just overly cautious with everything. So there we go. Now we can unclip it. Now you guys all saw <laughs> the blooper reel of the worst signature I've ever sewn in. <laughs> That's so funny. If it was going to happen, of course it was going to happen there, right? Okay, so then I just want to trim this, even it up, whatever. It's all good. Okie dokie. We have it. It's done. Yay. It feels good in your hand too. This little fabric cover, it really feels good in your hand. Now you could put um, lace down the spine. Obviously we're going to decorate the cover. I don't know exactly what with, the, with what yet, but yeah, this is our journal. It's pretty cool. I like how you can pretty much do the cover and a journal, like the pages of a journal, in less than an hour. I think that's pretty awesome. Like this took us an hour and a half, but you know, it's different when you're actually doing it yourself without camera. This little guy. And then in the center, we have all this funness happening. So we've got some fun things to play with. And then we've got a pocket. And then we also have this right here that we could attach something to if we wanted to later, you know, just attach it as a flap to another page. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to cover this up so this isn't here. And I don't mind this at all. We'll put a pocket or some decoration here. And probably it will have blue in it. I don't know. Yeah, I like this. It's very cute. It's just a quick, simple little Christmas journal. And all of my pages folded nicely. They were all pretty sturdy and everything. So it, we're all good there. This cover will soften up over time. And as we fill it, it's going to start rounding out which is the way I like them. So yeah, we're getting there, but we have a lot of room. <laughs> it never goes well when you're on camera, but it's good to see that no matter what happens, you can always go back and fix it. Even if that would have went like terribly wrong, which I mean, you know, it wasn't great, but if it would have went terribly wrong, you still could have went back and fixed it. All I really needed was clips. So that goes to show you, you need something to clip your pages to your cover. <laughs> I thought maybe we could do it without, but it didn't go very well. Okay. So anyway, let's start making some stuff to go inside of here. I wanted to do some projects with some 12 by 12 paper. However, in this little small format, um, what do we measure? We, right now, our pages, our pages are just about four and a half 
I think they're by seven and a half. Yeah, like four and a half by seven and a half. So when we make pockets to go at the bottom of a page, they're going to have to be four and a half. And then, you know, obviously tags and stuff, they're not going to be taller than seven to fit in pockets. So yeah, let's try making some stuff. Yeah, that is, that's one of my things. I, I typically like, I mean, I always pretty much do staggering or something in the center like this. But normally I like to stagger going in too. So like to me, this is like the end. This is like the beginning, even though this is technically the end back here. But if you put them staggered here, they would be staggered there also. <laughs> I'm just saying. So we might add a pocket right here. We probably will because we can't really decorate this page. So probably a pocket here. But at this point, it's just going to be a glued on pocket. And then we will tuck something in. Yeah. So we need some stuff for here. I want to leave some writing space, so I don't want to cover all of that up. But we're going to have some clip-on ephemera also. You just got to go with it. You know, I could sit here and make choices forever, but you, you just at some point just got to say, I got to go with it because you're going to decorate. So even if a page isn't 100% like, oh my gosh, that's the best page ever, you're going to decorate it. It's all going to blend together. It's going to be great. So, yeah. I try not to spend hours and hours picking them. All right, 12 by 12 paper. Then we're going to cut it down and make some things. Um, I brought in a whole bunch of new papers. I have some plaid and I have some floral, which obviously those all go with this have a big pile of other paper over here apparently lots of things to choose from oh this is from the other project I get it I'm like where did all this stuff come from that's where it came from the other project all right I went to Michael's and I got some paper pads from Michael's this is this project put that up there so I have these paper pads from Michaels. I don't know. Let me just show you one of them. I don't know if, honestly, this is such a small, I mean, I keep saying such a small, but it's not that small. We might just go with six by six paper. It might just be easier to make things out of six by six. So I don't typically buy paper pads from Michaels, but... I was watching some hauls and they were enabling me to go over to Michael's and buy some stuff. So we have this, which this is too burgundy. This is much too tan. We're not doing gold. But there is this Santa, which I think he goes fine in here. So we could do something with him. But again, he's really, really big. I mean, even these journaling cards, they're about a whole page. So I'm just going to flip through this quickly. These little snowy houses are cute. We might do something with one of those. But I also want to look at the 6x6 because I have the 6x6 of this exact one. So, yeah. Okay. Let's look at the six by six. Would you do that if you had two signatures? Would I do what if I had two signatures? Sew it in that way? Yeah, I would just have a bigger spine, make a wider spine so I can sew it in. Is that what you're asking? I don't know. Tell me what you're asking specifically if I would do it again. So if I had two signatures, instead of folding it a flat fold, I would have rounded it and put two signatures in there. Is that what you're asking? Okay, so here's the little one. And I think we're going to want to go with the little one, honestly. I mean, I don't mind pulling out pages, but the little one just seems more the scale. Oh. 
Well, I just ripped my cover. These little stickers. Who else hates these little stickers? The little ones that close. Oh, these are double-sided too. We can make more out of double-sided paper. Definitely. Cool. There's some green music I like. And this has a little bit of blue in it, and it's totally 1950s. All of this good stuff. So we're going to pull that one. Little snowy houses. Little tiny cards. This is the Santa that I want. All right, so I've made up my mind. I like these because they're double-sided. So we're going to go with the 6x6. Six six. Unless we need something bigger, but it's kind of like overkill to me, I think. I've dropped something on the floor. A little flash card for ephemera. Okay, so we have some paper to craft with. That was this paper pad. Honestly, I don't really see anything else in here that we would use. I mean, that's that one. This one is all plaid. Which I wish you could just break these, but you really just can't. So... We're going to have to cut this one open, too. Okay. I like plaid with Tim Holtz. That's always nice, right? And we have many, many plaids to choose from. I'm kind of leaning towards that one, but I also like these ones. I'm going to go with this green one. Okay. This one is more like cutesy, and it's like a pastel mint green. So I think we're going to spare him. I don't have to open him right now. All righty. So we have some six by six. Let's see what we can do with that. I also have these. This is really the reason why I went to Michael's this year is because they offered these. Stagger the center. Yes. If Even if I had two signatures, I would do it. I would do it in each signature. I do it with five signatures. I do it with eight signatures. It's just my kind of thing. I like to do that. Now, sometimes if you don't want people to be able to tell, like, here's when one signature starts and when one signature ends, then you might not stagger it. You might just want it all to flow together. I personally think they're going to find out which signature, where the signature ends and begins anyway. It's not a big deal. So, yeah, I, I would stagger them. Unless you just wanted it super blendy and flowy. You know, it just depends. Everybody's different, right? That's just my thing, you know. I mean, lots of people stagger, but I'm just saying it's just my preference. But you see these, um, what are these called? These tall, skinny papers for like a certain type of card. I forget what they're actually called. Slimline? Yes, slimline. So I like these papers for slimline. And I really like this one. So we're going to pull some paper and then we're going to make some things with it. I don't think I need to pull another plaid. Honestly, we have plaid. So um, what I would like is since this is holly and there's heavily a floral influence on these papers, the kit papers, the there's a lot of holly and whatever all over these kit papers. There's holly there. There's holly here. I would like a little bit more floral. And also, this is much better quality paper. This is the um, Festive Floral from Craft Consortium. And their paper is better quality. So I want to find something that is more like holly themed. Like these ones aren't bad. I mean, we might use that one. What else is there? The poinsettias are always pretty. Here's a bunch of holly. And it's small scale, so that's kind of nice. And then we have some fussy cuts. Okay. Cool. That's that. 
And now I got paper pads everywhere. Now, Tim Holtz paper. Tim Holtz paper is right here. And I do want to use that because that's kind of a theme, right? It goes with it. So we need to pick up some things to make some stuff out of here. Like looking at our kit, you know, we're, we're looking at some Victorian. We're looking at some 50s. It's kind of everything, which is what I liked about the Tim Holtzy stuff. They're, they have everything, too. So anything that's got black and white pictures. This one was green sack, which whatever, you know, don't really care about it. We could use that if we wanted. Um, these two aren't bad to make different things with. I don't want to use anything too dark. That's cute, but I don't really know what we'd make with it. Yeah, so I think those things are good. Those three. So I picked three out of Tim Holtz. Now, I want to do some foldy things. Let's use this one first. So on one side, he's got a chocolate invoice. On the other side, he's got holly. What we really need to focus on is pockets. I mean, you could do diagonal pockets. You could do regular flat pockets. So you could do diagonal pockets that go this way and tuck in. You could do regular flat pockets. I would like to do something that folds. That's a lot of green. We can't pick up anything today. I mean, I could do the holly right there. Or do we want to do like this little Santa? See, now I'm getting picky. Let's do the little Santa. Okay, first thing first, he doesn't have a perforated top on him. So that's going to need cut off. I'm just going to cut it with scissors. You could get the trimmer out. Sharon, did I say hello to you when you came in? Or did you just sneak in? Hello anyway. Okay. So for right here, I don't really want to cover up all of that. So like this is nice writing page. We need to decide, like, I think I'm fine leaving it plain here. But that means we would have to add something here. But my preference is to add something here. You know what I'm saying? To leave it open. Let's just do... Hmm. I'm sorry. Now I'm having second thoughts. Hold, please. I mean, to me, that is just too much green. I think we're going to use that with blue. Okay. I've changed my mind. We're going to go to this one. We're working on this part of the book right here. <laughs> and I want to do some kind of pocket tuck. So... Right, if I go that way, we're going to look at that. If I go this way, we're going to look at this. So I think we're going to go this way. Hmm. I am going to make it wide. So if I glue him here, he's got a little tuck pocket here. He is a pocket here. It's not super thrilling, right? 
I think we need to add another pocket onto this. I think I'm going to make him a pocket this way, completely folded in. And then I would like to add a decorative pocket across the top of here. It's kind of a waste of paper, but honestly, it's tempting so we have enough. So I want to hole punch the top of this. And I'm just going to use this, this uh, whale tail. And I'm just going to eyeball it. There's nothing else on this page. So that's perfectly fine. I don't know where the little pop out went. So I'm going to pop this on here. We're going to be able to tuck back here or here and down in the center here. And I want to add another pocket across here with some of this decorative paper. We could do these cute little houses because it's lumber. I mean, that's not bad, right? And a, just a little corner pocket across there. And I'm just going to put them together. I'll put them together and I was going to mark it, but I'm just going to cut it. I'm trying to save from having to go get the trimmer. I need to cut it. Okay. Fun little strip to play with later. And then I just want a diagonal. That's really all I want. So we've got something that looks like that. And his little corner needs trimmed right there. Just a teeny tiny bit. And then he can have a tuck here, a tuck here, and something can go on the back here if I glue all three sides. I think that's good. Okay, we can decorate this a little more, but let's get this in and get this sealed. So I just made a little flap. That's all I'm gonna to use to close it with. Hopefully my art glitter glue works. I'm gonna do this side. It's kind of stringy if you guys can see that. I'm gonna do the bottom. And then I'm gonna do this side here so that it doesn't get caught when people are sliding things through. And across there. And then we're going to fold. And we have a pocket with a pocket. Now, do I want to trim that down a little bit? I think I do. I want to see just a tiny bit more of the original. So I made my pocket a little bit smaller. Yes. So it doesn't cover up so much of this writing. So then we're going to glue that on. Basically, I glue all of it, these sides. Oops. I need to hold it still. <laughs> My hands are super unsteady today, apparently. And then glue that to the side of it. Line it up. And squish that down. Okay, so we have a pocket right there. We have a pocket here. And when I glue it on, we're going to have another pocket. And that's what's going to go there. Yeah, I mean, you could also just clip this to a page or something. But if I glue it here and leave this open, we'll tuck a card in there. Because there's already going to be a tag sticking out of there. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing. Just making sure I get enough on because the Tim Holtz paper is kind of thick. And I don't want to put it all the way to the spine or all the way to the bottom. I want to leave some room there. 
And then up here in the corner at the top, I'm just going to put a dot. That way you could go here or you could go here. Does that make sense? So there's options. There's that one. We can put lace. We can we can decide on all of that later. But right now, I just want to get some basic pockets in. Cool. We've left him alone, which is cool for now. I'm going to leave that one. But we're going to put something here. I don't know if we're going to put something on the rag paper yet. But something there. Now, for little ephemera pieces... I definitely want to use some of those. Where are they? There's that pack. And there's this pack that I thought we had one of these opened already. Some old book page randomly in here. Ephemera there. I've got a big bucket of stuff that I'm looking through. Okay. So I have a bag of pockets that are already made. And in one of these, this one. When I open a crinkly bag, sorry in advance. I want to use some of these in here. That in here. These are coffee dyed goodness. Um, here's a copy dyed thing. Here's a copy dyed that. There's a tiny little bag, a card. There's one of these. If you can't tell, we're going copy dyed. <laughs> I have copy dyed goodies. Cool. That was fun. All right, we're done with the crinkly for now. So this little card would have to be, oh, it fits. It actually fits. That's cool. Okay. Well, we can have a pocket that's like that. I think that's really cool and kind of goes with Tim Holtz stuff. Um, I'm going to put these ones off to the side for now. And we'll look at making those in a minute. I'm going to put it here. My only dilemma was I usually like when I use these card catalogs to leave the hole so that you can dangle something through. But because of where my page is, it's not really an option. Unless I tied it with string or something first. So do I want to put something through that before I glue it on? Hmm. Um, a little piece of sari or seam binding, maybe? Where is that? Just so that we have an option of leaving that there to use at a later time. Um, I'm looking for some seam binding because I want to tie a little thing right there. Bear with me while I find that. Okie dokie. So we have red or we have green. I think I like the red better. So we're going to go with red. These are vintage hug snug that I haven't opened yet. And I just want like the smallest little piece that we don't know yet. So. And then. I want to tie it. I think I want to tie it this way. So I'm folding it in half. And I'm pinching it up there so I can get it through the hole. And then I've made a loop. And then I want to pull the tails through the loop. Just like you're tying it on the top of a tag, but we're tying it through this hole. Okay, and this gives us an option so that I can come back and I can add a little charm or I can add a little, um, 
not a clothes pin, but <laughs> a little pin on there with some kind of dangle. But for now, it's got this little tie, okay? It just preserved it for me so that when I glue this, we're good. And I'm going to glue it, and then we're going to decorate it. I think I want to hole punch it so that we can tell it's a pocket. Because it's coffee dyed, it's probably going to need a little ink on it. And for decorating this, I'm probably just going to put something simple on it because I like the whole card catalog thing. I'm trying to make it straight. If you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, cool. There's that. How does it look? Does it need coffee dyed or inked? I'm thinking it's good. Um, now, for decorating it, we have instant Tim Holtz ephemera. I'm just going to dump these out at this point and get a baggie to put them in. Because we're going to be using these a lot. So, obviously we could put poinsettias there if they were small enough. There's a little holly. The holly is pretty cool. We could put the 25 on it. This stuff is so easy, right? You can just instantly do it. We could put one of these guys or girls on it. So what does it look like if we put a person? Can't really get her all the way down. I mean, I guess you can if you cover up this ribbon thing, which is kind of like the best part, in my opinion. Yeah, not her. I like the 25 and the holly, though. We have all kinds of people. We have stars and poinsettias, people and people and people. Now here's where I get lost and take some time, right? The pages I can do pretty quick, but we've just got holly, more holly. I really liked the thing I did at the beginning. I think I'm just going to go with the first things that came out of the templates pack. These are cool for decorating something later. Just making sure there's nothing better. I'm not seeing anything, so we're going with it. Okay. I'm going to make a giant pile over here. And we're just going to keep working from that. I know I said I really wasn't going to decorate much right now, but this just kind of fell out of there, so we're going with it. Yes? Agreed? Did I lose you all? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just sitting here talking to myself forever. Um, where's my inker? And my ink. Just trying to take the little white edges off because everything is coffee dyed on here. Still there, Lucy? Thank you. Just the edges I can get. Obviously, these are fiddly little bits, so I just bent that number five. <laughs> Whoopsie. Bent him again. Okay, cool. Let's get those on there and move on. That's super simple. Oh gosh, I left this open. Goodness! Now you know why it's always clogged up on me. I'm going to go like this with this one. And then I'm going to do the two. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. He still fits. Cool.
14 of you watching. Awesome, Carol. I mean, I could see you up there, but I just didn't know, like, you know, people have me on in the background and whatever. So that's fine. I don't care. I'm just saying. I didn't know if anyone was actually <laughs> still listening. Is that too straight? It better be. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. I would have liked it a little straighter, but it's good enough. So that's our little pocket, and he's going to dangle down there. I can get the five a little straighter. Now it's down too far. I don't know. Anyway, that's a pocket. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I know it's kind of boring just sitting there watching someone else make shit. I'm sorry, make stuff. See, now I did it. <laughs> and you all heard. Oh, goodness. I wondered when it was going to happen. Judging from the looks of me, you would never know the eyesore, but I do swear. I'm trying not, not to swear, but it's just a hard thing to stop doing. <laughs> Carol, thank you. Yeah, that happened. Okay, we have a pocket. Let's go back to this guy. Is there anything that we can stick on him to decorate him quick? We have a pile of goodies. Like, there's all kind of like big things in here though. Like, nothing really goes with that. There's these little pointer fingers. I don't know. I don't know what we would do with that stuff. We'll have to come back to him. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like, you know, whatever. You're just you're just talking and then you say something that you're like, well, wait a minute, why did that even come out of my mouth? It really had no point. It was just there. It's bad. I need to stop that. Anyway, here we are to a green page. We need to put something on it. We can do scrapbooking paper again. I could make a foldy up pocket with this, which is, I mean, we just had that other copy dyed thing. Let's make it, but let's save it for another spot in the journal because I don't want to get all the copy dyed ephemera uh, pockets and stuff too close together. So maybe on the other half of him, back here, we can do this. I kind of like that. So for this one, I will probably put him in the middle. And maybe you could go this way with a journal card. Because he's a pocket here. I mean, he could be a pocket here, but that's like really, really tall to the top of our journal. So yeah, probably that way. All right, we're going for it. And I really should have thumb notched it, but there's not much of a pocket there. I'm going to do it, even though there's not much. And now let's get some fresh glue. All right, so we'll need to decorate that. Hi, Cheryl. How are you feeling today? Hope you're feeling better. Even Louise Heinzel does it sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, so we have this pocket. We could clip him, honestly, but we better glue him down and make him a, a side tuck also. What do we want to put on him? We also have this pack of ephemera. And I'm just going to mix them together at this point. It doesn't matter. Um, that would have been cute, but it's slightly too long. Get a little music. 
I got a little card, but that's a lot of numbers. Music. I've got the 25 back here. One of these would be cute in there. Um, I can't see it when all that stuff is on there. That's pretty cute, actually. Let's do that with some book page behind it. I gotta corral my piles of messes. I like to dump these in a bin and just use them out of the bin while I'm crafting that season. There's some old German page. Let's put that behind it. Finally starting to feel better. That's awesome, Cheryl. That's awesome. It's going to have to have a little tiny bit showing. down up here. It's super blendy. You can't really see it. Let's stick it off that side more. Okay, I'm good with that. We're just doing simple. I like to come back and do my over embellishing at the end. And I said I was going to mute that, didn't I? But then I didn't. I need to ink that a little bit. So Carol's got all of her, well, not all, but her grandchildren playing with them. Stephanie's fussy cutting. Are you still working on cookbook journal, Stephanie? Is that what you're fussy cutting for again? I've got a little bit sticking up right where my pocket is. There's a little holly leaf sticking up right where the pocket is so I just want to make sure I get that glued down so that he see he's catching right there and now it's going to be super gluey cool he's good now okay we could even decorate a little bit like up here obviously i could have stamped that if i would have been thinking i would have stamped is it too late probably i'm not going to be able to get santa's feet down there but that would have been cool to put that retro santa claus on there where is he where did i put them <laughs> crash I also want to use these in here. I've been dying to use these. We could have put the Christmas tree in there. I was thinking maybe the Santa Claus. Let me get this put away. We're going to do this for a minute. Sorry, guys. If you can't tell, I'm a little low energy today. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Carol, you just provide the snacks. Oh, they're Switch games. Those games are pretty fun. Let's pop Santa out and see how he... I mean, I just need to get his feet in there is my only problem. I don't know. He covers up right where the green is. So I guess not on there. But 
something should have been on there. We'll stamp him on something else. We do need to put some more decoration up here or something, though. It's kind of plain. I could leave it to the end and just glue it in so that we're going. Probably what I'm going to do. So for this one, I want to glue it, but I want to leave it to where you can tuck something all the way behind it. So I'm going to glue top and bottom. And then we can make something like a belly band where you can tuck it. And I'm gluing it pretty good because I don't want it to come off. Ah, well, I guess it's going there because I touched it accidentally. And I've got glue seepage. Cool. And now he'll be a belly band and a pocket. And we'll have tag in him, so he'll be good. Okay, back to where we were up here. We did this. I didn't want to put coffee dyed on this green page, but something does need to go there. No, an hour and a half last night, which is the problem. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Carol. But yeah, an hour and a half. And I, it's, it, I'm feeling it. Definitely feeling it. Um, I don't want to do coffee dyed because we just did coffee dyed on the page before. I really want to do like one of these little bingos as some sort of pocket eventually. Um, yeah, it's it's really getting to be a problem. I was extremely exhausted last night when I went to bed because I did so much work yesterday. But it decided that it did not care and it was not going to let me sleep. I slept for an hour and a half and then it said, that's it, you're done. So these are the three options for this page for pockets. Hmm. Right. I'm just going to leave the time card part for now. Yeah. It would have been halfway, yes. Okay. I like this, but it's very white looking, right? It's very stark white looking. So um, I like the red a lot. And I like the green, even though it's a lot of green. I'm going to go with the green. Am I? Where's my red page at? Yeah. I guess I'll go with red. Because it's a ways before we get any more red. So I just need a pocket here. We could do a top tuck. We could do... Um, a regular pocket. I really want to do something that folds. That's, it's just going to be too wide. So we're going to have to cut it down before we do that. I need a pencil. It'll be fine. My sleep will catch up. Like I'll get probably three or four hours tonight. It's just super annoying. I'm going to make it slightly smaller. And then for this one, I'm going to cut it on the trimmer. The tartan, yeah. Yeah, it's it's white, but it's not stark white. It's got like a creamy vintage tone to it. I know I did too, but it was just too white. I could have inked it probably, but yeah. We're going to do this one for now. So supposedly you line up your mark in the line and you cut. As long as you're lined up there at the top. I don't know. We'll see. It slides really, really good. We're going to need this for that tiny little envelope that's over there for a tag. I don't think I'm going to cut anything else off of that. So I wanted something 
That's going to be upside down. I wanted something that folded. Where's that? It's right there. Um, okay. So when all else fails, just fold your paper <laughs> and you get instant pockets, right? Except for this one, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put pockets inside so this can have a little pocket here. This can have a center pocket and this can have a corner pocket. And this could even just tuck into uh, a pocket when we're done. It, it doesn't have to be glued down, but yeah. Where is some paper? Maybe we want to put this holly on that. I need some other decorative paper to put in here. Maybe we could put this in there. I mean, that's kind of stark, but I don't hate it either. I'm going to do it. Either that or the Santas. Okay, I'm not doing the stark white. <laughs> That's as quickly as I change my mind on that. So we need a couple of patterns so that they're not all the same. We've got this green and this red. All of those would be fine. I'm going to do the two little corners out of this red, okay? So the two little corners are going to go like this on both sides, and then Mr. Santa can be the middle pocket. So this one is exactly, I mean, it's literally exactly the right um, width. Yeah, Judy, it's, it's getting tough. It's really getting tough. So I just need to kind of eyeball how much of a diagonal I need so that I can get it. I don't know if that's right, but we'll try it. That's not bad there. I'm okay with that. He's going to need his corner chipped off. So he folds. So that one's fine there. So then I really should just be able to like line this up and cut another one. And it would be the right size, theoretically. Doesn't have to be exact, but yeah. I keep thinking something sticking out down here. <laughs> Mostly what happens to me is I just get in pain and it just doesn't, it's just really wearing on you, you know, when you're in pain. And the one and a half hours just doesn't let your body ever get enough rest to reset that, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so we have something that looks like that. And because the poinsettias are organic, it looks a little different, but it's the same, right? So we can go ahead and glue those on, and then we'll put Santa in the middle. There is these green, too. I mean, I know it's going on green, but no, the red. So I'm just gluing the top and the, or the side and the bottom on these. And they're just little tuck pockets. Did I glue this wrong? I did. Darn it. Yep, I did. Well, I guess he's going this way then. <laughs> oh, man. He's going to sit off to the side. <laughs> I made him go this way, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, well, at least we have some more points out of paper. I just need to cut it again. And now it needs to cut both ways. 
No, it's okay. All right. We're just going to go for it. There's always trimming it down later. I'll just cut it that way again. It needs to go this way. And then I need to trim off this little end so that he can close. All right, this time I'm not going to glue him wrong and we're going to put him on. Okay. Just straightening them up. Okay, there's two points out of pockets. Let's do a little Santa pocket in the middle. And Santa pocket, he can't be giant. He has to be small. Where's that pencil at? Right here. Okay. We're just going to mark him and cut him. And I could get the trimmer for him, but I'm just going to cut him. He's going to be such a small little pocket. It's not going to matter. I'm going to cut it right at that red dot. And we got some scraps to play with later. And then I want to hole notch him so that people know it's a pocket, I guess. <laughs> I don't like that one. That one came out a little weird. Better. And then I'm going to ink it. Okay. And that's what we have. And I want to try to ink these little corner ones too. They should have been inked a little bit. Sorry, you guys cannot see what I'm doing off camera, but I'm trying to ink the edge of the corner pockets and give them a little smudge, give everything a little smudge. It's kind of foxed paper anyway. So yeah, cool. That's where we're at with that. And then we will find some little things to put inside of here and make some little tags have a box of Christmas ephemera that is all little stuff. So I think we can use those. And he just needs to fit in here and close. So does it close up? It does. So then we need to decorate the outside and make things for the inside. Cool. There's a lot of little storage in there. Night, Cheryl. Thanks for coming. Good night. Okie dokie. What do we want on the cover of him? Choices. We have some book page that we could put back there. We have a doily. Oh, darn it. I forgot to put a Christmas doily in this book. <laughs> yeah, a Christmas doily was totally supposed to go in here, but it didn't make it so far. So, yeah, we'll be putting one in eventually. Let's find something to decorate the front of this. I keep wanting to use that on something, but it's never the right size. Like these little cards could go perfectly in there once we make some other stuff. All this little stuff here. I need something for the front. 
You could do it around the edge of a page, yes. You could clip it. You could do all kinds of things. Like that would be cool with some book page. Or this with some book page. I mean, it's a lot of red, but I think there was holly somewhere. There was holly in here somewhere. There's this one, which is more white. Here's holly. Okay, I like the holly because she has holly. She has holly in her hair or her bonnet. So we're going to put this on as a pocket. We're going to decorate it and it's going to open up. So up here at the top, because it's going to be a pocket on there, I'm going to want to put a thumb hole here too. All the punching of thumb holes. And trying to get them perfectly centered without measuring. And ink it. The green wreath. Where's the green wreath at? Did I miss it? There is a green wreath right here. It's cute. Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> Let's put something back there so that we can... So we did on the other green one back here, we did some of this German. Let's do some of the German up here. I just need a small piece of it. end up with these little tiny pieces that I don't like on my tears. And I think we need something on the whiter side, right? Like if we did that, we would need something on the white side or this with something else there. Even a postage stamp would have been great there, but I don't know that I have one in there. So I'm still leaning towards the holly, but I do like the wreath. Depends on what else we put there. Um, where is that doily piece that I had earlier? Let me find a little doily piece. I just had a craft a lunch over here. Oh, goodness. There's way too much stuff in here. And then crafting in here, it's just adding more stuff to this room. <laughs> so much stuff. Okay, here's the doily. And I'm stepping on some cards that we're going to need. See, I also have um, coffee dyed cards that I was going to tuck in there or tags. They can be anything. We could even use them as pockets. Okay. Okay. So if we do the wreath, I mean, if it's the edge, I guess, I don't know. I kind of don't like the doily behind it. I think it just competes with it. Okay. I've made up my mind. Hopefully you agree with my choice. <clears throat> Okay, I'm doing it. You like the holly better now? Agreed, the holly is nice.
I'm just putting the glue on the little thing on the doily. And then I just stuck my finger in it. And I got lots of extra glue on that doily. It's not going anywhere. Not for a long time. And I'm gluing the holly. And there we go. So I built the piece and that'll glue it on there. Sorry. I don't know why I feel like my camera is so far over today. I feel like I have to lean over the desk really far to get to it. And so this little doily piece, I think I'm going to trim off. The little one that's hanging down there. You kind of don't know that like you're supposed to open that. So I think I would like to come back and put a tab right there. Agreed? I think so. I think I'm going to put a tab right there. It's a perfect place for a tab. Okay. One last wipe off of extra glue. We're stuck to it. My tip is getting all gluey. Let's do a tab right there. We have the tab punch, we might as well. So I think we're gonna need a green tab. I don't wanna do plaid on plaid, but I need a green tab. Wasn't there, um, there's like music like a little green music tab right there. I don't know if I like that or don't like that. What's on the back of these guys? Simple red one. What's on the back of this one? Advertising. What's on the back of this one? I think we found our tab. So let me punch a tab quick out of this. Let me fold it over a little bit. I mean, it's not the best tab, but at least you know it's, you know, you pull that open. I think a pyre is better. And I'm not loving the stripes, but I think we're just going to de decorate it. That's better. Yes, <laughs> you like it. Oh, that's funny. So funny. All right, I'm inking it. Both sides, since we have to pull it open. Then I'm going to glue it on and then we can just put some little decoration on it or something since it is so plain. Okie dokie. I'm going to put it up on top, but I'm going to have to move it where you can't see it right now <laughs> to do it. Come on. Okay. So that's what he looks like. Then he needs something right there. And there's a ton of tiny little thingies to put there. Like we could even put like that there. There's a ton of goodies to put there. What do you guys think of that? Kind of too big for it, but I kind of like it. Yeah, I definitely like that better. There's a couple of those. There's this one that's like more subdued. Yeah. The big one or the little one? Kind of like the music one a bit better. 
<laughs> yeah, I hear you. There's also this. Not that one. One of the round ones I like. I guess I was just at the point where I didn't want to look in there for more paper. And honestly, I like the green stripe. I don't see any more little tiny round bits. Oh, wait, there's this one. As soon as I say it, it appears. If only everything worked that way. Okay. Those are our options. The smaller one, maybe. I really liked that first 25 right there. This one. I know it's kind of funky, but I kind of like it. I also want a little label down here. Not another price, but I just flicked Tim Holtz with them across the room. I, I want a little label down there. Where is a little label? Like there's this little green guy. There's this little ticket. There's this, but if we're putting 25 up there, no. Here's a little red label. I don't know. I don't like that there. I'm almost leaning towards this ticket, honestly. With that up there. I'm going to do it. I don't really care if you don't like it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to do it. We are. I mean, it's not really Tim Holtz journal, but you know what I mean. It's just a vintage journal, but um, it's kind of decorated with Tim Holtz stuff and kind of like Tim Holtz theme. More style of that, I guess. Ooh, I'm losing it. Things are flying everywhere. Okay. Ah, see what I mean? They just fly out of your hands. Okay, maybe he needs to go down there more anyway. Okay, cool. I like it. We're good. I'm going to trim off the doily and then we're moving on. Trim it off and glue it down here. Hi, Casey. I didn't say hello to you. Did you just get off work? Oh, you did. Okay, cool. You think it works with the tartan colors? I liked it. So I did it. Honestly, these are just kind of wrapped around there. I don't know. I'm just going to cut them off because they're irritating me at this point. These little pieces of the doily. Yeah, they're irritating me. <laughs> All right. So that's what we have for our little flippy Audi pocket goodness. Oh, I almost forgot about this pocket when I put the tab on, but he still works. Thank goodness. So do we want to center him? That's kind of what I'm thinking because we made this a pocket. So I'm going to glue it on and I'm going to center it. I have decided. However, quite a bit of Tim Holtz Christmas paper. Oh, wow. That's a score. I love Tim Holtz stuff to play with. And then, so I glued it. And I'm going to plop it on there. And then I'm going to hold it for a minute. <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah, we all love Tim Holtz paper, right? Who wouldn't love that? Strange. Awesome for you, though. Okay, so we have pocket, 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 pocket. Lots of pockets. And we also had pocket here 
and pocket here with pocket here. So we're doing good. Now we have this page. This page needs something simple because we did like, I don't know, pretty good stuff there. We just need something simple on this page. It could even be a clip on or um, we could do like that wraparound pocket thing. I might skip that one for now just because I don't want to over decorate at that point. We did the green and the green back here is decorated. I mean, we still need to do more decorating, but it's got something on it at least. So far back here, we need something on this guy and something on this guy. So yeah, I'm definitely skipping these for now to decorate. We could decorate here. Um, are these words that I like or are these not words that I like? It's fine, but maybe a pocket, something on both of those possibly. And then this is an uptuck thing we'll have to do something with later. I don't really like these two together. I wish I would have put a doily or something in between there, but you can't really tell what this is at this point. <laughs> yeah. So we can make a pocket there. What do we got? A little bit of time? I really wanted to make one of these into a pocket. So I think I'm going to focus on doing that. And I'm going to use the bottom one. So hopefully we can use the top one for something else. I'm just cutting it out and then we'll trim it down. So I'm going to cut it here. And I'm going to leave these corners rounded on this side. So like a little short here-ish. And let's corner around these corners. Let's see if the corner rounder will hit them. Sometimes my corner rounder cuts things and sometimes it does not. I don't really know why. It just sometimes doesn't want to work. Okay. Oh, I'm going to take a minute for here or take a minute here. <laughs> I need to make more friends with old people. And the scarcity of it here. What are we talking about? Oh, Tim Holtz stuff. <laughs> oh, no more paper crafting. Sad. You know what's happening though? A lot of people did it for like the pandemic and then they, you know, or they're all back to work now. They realize they don't have time. So they're getting rid of their supplies. All right. We have this very weird, funky Santa. So we're going to have to decorate this with something that goes together here. Um, I do think I'm going to hole punch him. I debated on it, but I think I'm going to. Sorry, that's probably extremely loud. These punches are so heavy. And then it needs inked because everything else is pretty distressed on this. And I'm hitting those corners that I rounded. Honestly, this edge too. Okay. So we need something on here that goes with this crazy Santa. I love Tim Holtz and I am addicted to his Christmas stuff. As soon as it's out, I'm buying it and I'm buying it in bulk. I make a lot of Christmas journals though, so I use it all. We need something with crazy Santa, something that goes with crazy funky Santa. You guys need to tell me what goes with crazy funky Santa. Hmm. 
my brain first goes to what fits and then my brain's like no it doesn't look good although i like weird stuff like this is a tree back here and putting this deer on here you know it doesn't really go <laughs> i know it's kind of stupid but i even like that tag i think in the tim holtz ones you can have fun right you could do totally weird stuff That's what I like about them. You really can't go wrong. There's even a baby deer. Yep. I don't even want to tell you how many I bought, Casey, and how many I have. I have enough to last me. When he said that they were going bye byes I knew that I needed to stock up because I use them a lot. Um, I don't, I have some vintage or not vintage. I have some older Christmas uh, paper from Tim Holtz that isn't a pad, which I guess, you know, he hasn't made in a long time, but yeah. So I try to stock up. The gold bell, since there's some gold over there with Santa, this gold bell. That's not bad either. All of this is little stuff. So this is my next pile to go through. And like, there's really real Santa, so he can't go over there. Um, we could do people. Like, what about doing people? Because it's kind of like black and white page. And then we could do like something Christmassy. They don't really fit on that pocket, but maybe that pocket just needs to go somewhere else. Or maybe I need to find smaller people. Or maybe one of those busts of people and make it funky because Santas are funky. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I get tired and get silly. Um, okay, that's it for that pile. And then there's just like heads of people over here. And another gold bell. I mean, there's other heads of people, but... What do you guys think? Funky head of person with some sort of label or something. You can't really get in the pocket, but maybe I just need a different pocket if we were going to do that. I would like to use some of these people. I mean, that's not bad. It's really not bad. We're getting there with that. I really like this sleigh too, but it's too much junk on there. This one's not bad and that one's not bad. I feel like the Tim Hill style, the funkier the better. I know, that's why I kind of wanted to be silly with it. You recently got 60 Tim Holtz stamp set. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome, Carol. Congratulations on that one. That's a good find. You really like the bell. I'm trying to use it. I just, it's going to have to have something underneath of it. And it has to have something with it. So <laughs> we're auditioning things for the bell right now. We could just load it up and make it like that. I don't hate that. Do you guys hate that? Or do you want this label up there? Those are my choices for regular Tim Holtz things. It kind of all blends in, though. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't really stick out that much. Let's just do it. We'll just do it and move on. I mean... It's just kind of like random stuff, right? 
that's kind of the point of it. Do we want to add book page in there also, or do we just want to leave it? We've kind of used book page a lot, but I think we just want to leave it. Although I do like to do three things normally. The other side of the bingo is just some words. Yeah. I like the bingo. Even if we don't use it here, I still like the bingo. So we're getting there. I don't know. I will figure out this pocket. But we, we've got some start here. We've got a journal and we've got some start. So we'll keep going on it. You'll see these next week on Friday. I'm going to flip the camera around after I put my glue pin in. Because otherwise my glue is going to dry up again. You know. Oh, goodness. It's already dried up. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera around, and then let's see. Am I going to flip the camera? Yes, I am. There I am. <laughs> so we have a journal made. We have a good start on it. It's not terrible. We'll keep going on it. You'll see it next Friday, and then after that, I don't know whether I'll finish it. They need to get done, so next Friday for sure. Thanks, Stephanie. Yes. Yep. Casey, I have found them on there. I have a whole shelf of them, so I don't need to buy any more at this point. I need to let other people have them. <laughs> you liked the lady? So did I. You're probably going to see some more funky things in there. I've been playing it pretty safe, and I really want to play it more funky. So especially with that digital, it, it allows that. Oh. I guess maybe it depends on warehouse location. I'm not sure. I don't know when the last time I bought them, probably six months ago or so, but yeah, they were on there. So yeah. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> See, I don't know if anyone actually pays attention or cares or whatever, like, I don't know, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sharon. I'm just here every Friday doing what I'm doing, and I'm enjoying talking to you guys and chatting with you guys. I'm sorry I didn't feel the best today, and that showed, and also I said a bad word, and I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> I really am upset with myself for doing that on camera. Um, that's what one and a half hours of sleep consistently gets you, I guess. <laughs> Casey wasn't here for that. Sorry. Casey's like, um, I'm your mod and I probably would ban you. So don't say that. Anymore. <laughs> anyway, now I'm blushing and turning pink. I'm going to say good night. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. I am going to try to feel better and not come on here in so much pain and so tired because it was kind of like a slow dragging thing tonight. I apologize. It will be better next Friday. I will be much happier in my normal self. I appreciate you guys putting up with me. You didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear it. I like that. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks. You guys are the best group of people. I really appreciate all of you. And Casey, I appreciate you being the mod today in chat. Not that anyone was going to cause problems or anything like that. But, you know, questions come up occasionally and I don't see them. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to try. I have to get up in the morning and go to that show with my daughter. So, yeah, it's going to be a busy, busy day tomorrow. Busy. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, guys. You're all so kind. Thank you. Well, I hope that you guys all have a good weekend and I hope that you sleep well and do something fun this weekend. Um, do something creative if you have time. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. I'll say good night and let you go. Thanks, Judy. Good night. We'll see you on Tuesday at seven for the sale. Thanks,